Right, today, we'll be done over a couple of days. I've got to leave that running because of um, fuel, the contaminated fuel. Uh, I plan to swap over my axle. It's obviously mine, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. It's actually somehow bent. But to play it safe, I'm going to change the whole entire thing. Obviously with these as well, and all the steering arms, because mine was a bent, that's how I got it. This is from a scrap vehicle, so no sin. It's nice and handy, because all I really needed was just the um, casing. But I do plan to upgrade these anyway. But, uh, yeah, be interesting. Put it on, and it actually will be nice and true to drive. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the bumper off. The steering guard off and I'll basically have access to everything and I'll see about jacking it up to put this bad boy in and that is now the bumper off now it'll be a case of jacking it up make plans well it's jacked up <laughs> we're on the ground two pint of milk test as you can see Now what it is, you put it on actual stands on the frame, gonna support the axle, then I'll be ready to take the wheels off and basically drop the axle. Not literally drop it. And that's it, secured. So I've got axles on the frame, and I've got axle stands on the actual axle itself to support the weight. So I'll take the wheels off, and basically leave the actual chassis, uh, oh actual axle itself till last and then I'll pretty much be able to jack up but out in theory now wheels off basically lock the brake disc so that I can undo the different as you can see to turn it it's not going to undo but obviously need two hands Now obviously it's a bit easier if I had the, um, the prop shaft socket tool, but obviously I don't, but improvise, adapt and overcome, these are two 14mm spanners. It's actually working. So yeah, we basically get this off, and that'd be the shaft done. Just removing the spacer, then I'll remove the caliper so I can get the disc off. And then I'll gently get this hub off because it's a brand new hub. And then this side will be basically done. I've, I've come to see it. it can, I've removed this part of the uh, broken A system. And what I'll do is about to remove these two bolts. That arm bolt. And then pretty much this side will be done. Obviously, when I take this off, I'll hide it up out of the way. Mission accomplished. I managed to get my uh, carrier bolts out. Now what you'd need for that is obviously a 12 sided socket which I'm not very fond of but I couldn't run the risk of damaging the um, bolt heads. So in theory this can basically come off nice. I'm going to hang this up here somehow. I might actually put a ratchet up over the actual like the bonnet to hold this caliper and the one on the other side so it's completely out of the way. Get these discs off because these are obviously well they were brand new obviously but obviously used to gonna be rusty so then I can put my original calipers with the new brake pads on the new discs on the new axle well replacement and it's not really that far off actually being able to get this one out so it's sort of exciting and stoked I've obviously penetrate that bad boy up get that one out and then all I need to do is get the two bolts out of here so on the other side that bolt out the steering arm bolt and the steering damper and then I believe I'll be safe to drop it obviously I've got to do this but this one this bearing is actually broken so I'm going to um, shots I'm going to cut this wire so it's no problem take this all off just move out of the way hmm, it's going on quite smoothly Oh, I will be saving this because that was brand new. One of my first videos of this, I actually, as you can see, put that on. But the rest, I'll be taking the shafts out, taking the bearing the other side out, taking the diff out. Uh, I might save that shock steering damper, sorry. And then the rest, I'll basically just scrap it. I might save these. Look good, basically, quite powder coat and put it on. 
Right, caliper is off. It's just placed here because obviously my idea of uh, the bungee wasn't working because it was really heavy. I didn't want it to snap and the force, the momentum to come down and break something. So I've put it on the wheel. It looks under tension, but it's actually not. But uh, pretty much this side is almost done. So we'll get the two bolts out of the shock bit there, that one from there, and this one back here, and then this side will basically be done. But obviously, if anyone does this, I would strongly recommend obviously supporting. So I think once you just take the jack away, you'll pop your all, all you're holding on to really is these two in here. You don't want to be ripping stuff out. But it's going on quite well. I've just got to repeat this side, the other side, and then hopefully remove the axle. Right, the driver's side, I've basically got the caliper off, the disc is in the, uh, which is on the driver's seat. I'm basically just getting the last few bits off, I can't see probably because of the shadow, but I want to get this hub off now while it's here, get this shaft out because I'm going to keep that, then I'll have to just undo this bolt. This steering wheel up here is done. Undo that, that started leaking. I think that's because I've been turning it with the engine off. So I'll obviously have to sort that, but just doing the axle today. And then it'll always be ready to remove. Very exciting. Well, my uh, hub's out. New bearing, as you can see. I'm gonna take the shaft out, because I'll be keeping that. Because that's obviously good. And then, undo that bolt there that I'm pointing out so the camera can't see I've got the nut off for the steering just got to get it separated undo this bolt then two little ones and then this side is basically ready to just remove right shaft is out which I'm very pleased about so I've got a spare one I'm not long from this axle being taken off and be a scrapper and they're about to put the new one in what if I didn't notice, which is quite concerning, that bolt finger tight. But this actually is unfortunately scrapped because the underneath it has been walloped really hard from the previous owners, and this is very slightly in. Shame, but one of those things. When you're on your own, when you're on your own, you want to get this little bad boy off. You improvise, adapt, and overcome. And that's the shaft out the other side. And that's them both there. Obviously, I'll be getting rid of that one, that scrap, but the shaft is out, which I'm pleased about. So it's meant to be like that. That's nice and smooth. Get that sim out. We're basically not far from dropping this axle. Looks like that um, seal has gone. Mm -hmm. All bolts are undone that I'm aware of. Diff fluid has been drained, shafts are out, these bolts are out. The only thing really holding it in place now is the stands. But I won't be able to actually film and get it out myself, so unfortunately the next scene will be on the trolley jack, I plan to use the trolley jack underneath to lift up and then in theory pull out. Well, that's the axle out on the floor. All we've got to do is basically just move this aside over there, which I plan to do. And then in theory, move this back, slide underneath, bolt the two arms at the back in first with the trolley jack gently with a piece of wood, lift the axle up, put in the axle stands, and then basically reverse what I've done. It's going quite well I'm pleased about. I did choose to cut this because obviously this part is scrap and I don't want to be damaging my steering box because I think it's now leaking from where I've been turning it with the, steering, with the engine off. If I've damaged it off to get it refurbished but it's unfortunately it's one of those things. I have got a ball joint splitter but fortunately it didn't exactly work so I thought I'd just cut it for now just to get that bit off axle completely out from the vehicle take this off take the diff out scrap the rest 
and there is my diff. And as that's good, I'll be definitely keeping it, obviously, but the rest is now scrap. We'll be keeping that, the drain plug, and the rest of it in, it's going for the scrap man. Obviously, I'll clear this out of the way and then slide the new one under. Old axle's out the front, ready to be picked up by someone. What I want to do, I've basically got me rag. I'm going to tidy up or clean up some of the um, excess oil on there. Oh, it's bloody, that's quite clean actually. Make it look a bit more presentable and put it back in. Because this, as far as I'm aware, wasn't really off road, it was only ever used for dog handler. So. It should be. Well, that's in really good condition, actually. Absolute smashing bloke that I brought this off. If you have, I've said to him, if you have any more stuff, I'll definitely be interested. Look at that. You can't go wrong with that. Oh. Yeah. yeah, basically, I want to do that. Get it all nice and pretty. And then put it in. Slowly and surely, it's making its way to where it needs to actually be. Do you know? Actually, it's stoked that I've got this far in such a good time on my own. Yeah. And soon, it basically be bolted in. And it's just basically little things like putting my calipers on, my brake discs, wheels, etc. Slowly and surely, I'm bringing it back into lines, obviously. I need it here, and it's pretty much a foot away. What I'm doing, so the um, these bad boys can clear the axle sands. What I'm basically doing is keeping it level like this, and I'm basically pulling this side a couple of inches, going around the other side, doing the same. So it's basically slowly walking its way back. But once they are in position, I can bolt them up, put jack underneath here, lift this up carefully and gently. And basically bolt in, it'd be basically nigh on done. I'm actually pleased to have managed to get this far that with it basically being trouble free. I think the most difficult part I'm gonna have is getting that out. But if that's the only issue I'm gonna have, I'm pleased. I'm pleased with that. <sighs> Let the work commence. Right, this is basically how I've done it. <sighs> Literally have the stands to help get the angle. But that's basically how I want it. They're not bolted in. But once they're bolted in, I gently and carefully will lift this up and put it home. Basically, yeah, bolt them in how I wanted to. This one still hasn't got the bolt all the way through, but it has gone through the other side. Used the jack to gently lift up. Put an axle stand here. There isn't one here just yet, but this is how I've planned to do it in my head. But it's slowly coming together. The actual is kind of in. Bolts this side is all the way through, this one is halfway in. But unfortunately both the springs fell out so I've got to basically tension them down to stupidly small. Push the shock up, put the spring in with the plate. And then it's nearly there. So I'm not fighting with spring compressors. What I've pretty much done is drop the axle down on the floor and put the springs inside. And then as I jack up, it'll go. Obviously, I'll put the stand back in to obviously secure it, but it's for testing purposes only. Oh, well. That side isn't bolted in yet, but this side actually is, I'm pleased to say. This is all bolted in, suspension wires, I've got to do that up. I'm going to take this caliper off and bolt that caliper on. Well, take this caliper off, this disc, and this um, dust shield, and then basically put my stuff on here. And then it's basically things like put that on. Nearly there, obviously sort the steering bit out. It's getting to that point where it's starting to get dark. This is a real picture actually do, but almost there. 
Right, this is the next day. Uh, it's little things like basically I've put my original dust shields on here, I've gave this a bit of a clean up. Uh, and I noticed that the little rubbery grommet for the sensor wasn't in its housing properly. I didn't want the um, shaft to burn through it, so I had to obviously take that off, as you can see, reseat that properly, and put the bolt back. Because if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing properly. And as I'm actually here, because if I go through the wire, then obviously that's going to throw up problems on the dash, which I don't really want. But today, this should all be done. It should be on the ground. Disc is now on. Put the screw back in. On camera, it looks like it's actually chewed up, but it's actually not. It's just a bit grubby. I will be obviously cleaning up the surface where it's just on me grubby hands which shouldn't really be touching but I'll clean that up put the caliper on and then this side will pretty much be done well I've put the um, all the suspension stuff back on as you can see that's all tightened home i still got to do the rear of these but tighten these bolts down and that caliper will, will be done Basically put these in properly, obviously get rid of that one and put the new one in. Uh, this all on. Quick clean that up. Put some copper grease in there so it don't get stuck because obviously I had to fight to get these off. Give this a little clean up, but what I found was if you have trouble getting it off, instead of doing what a lot of people do, put screwed off stuff to prise it out, you're just going to damage it because rally. I found, we take the wheel off, take the bolts out, then bolt the wheel back on and basically like, hit the wheel in sort of like a cross formation keep doing that and it eventually will just wobble and fall off and I didn't need to use anything to get into ram in there as you can see nice and clean around the edges but a bit of copper grease on there will help that from fusing together next time now I'm at the point where basically I've just got to bolt the prop on obviously that's just literally just loose in there Luckily this was basically I'm bolted from the donor vehicle. A matter of like a couple of hours later I picked it up and brought it here. And then to yesterday I basically have installed it. So today I'm making the surfacing up so it actually didn't require that much cleaning, which is nice and handy, then I'll have drive. Just on the final part of basically this side, basically I'm gonna get this old shield off which is destroyed and rotten, as you can see. Put my clean one on, obviously brush up and clean this area up and reverse what's done the other side and this side will be done. Well, calipers in home, all the sensors are in properly as you can see. Bolts at the back are now done. Realistically what's left to do is basically put this wheel on. Go there. That wheel is on. Obviously I've got to sort the steering out, but I left that till last because I really don't want to be damaging that. That's just to keep it level so I don't bust anything. And then basically once the wheel's on, sort that, and I can, I can pretty much off the stands. Diff's, uh, oh, sorry, prop is actually bolted in properly. Realistically everything's all good to go. Anti-roll bar bits are in. This bad boy's in, which is a bit of a performance because I need to move the axle over by about well, it can of be ear size, ridiculously close. But unfortunately, my driveway isn't level, so it sits like that very slightly. So I had to pull the axle across and uphill, which I was able to do. Ah. Well, axle's now all on, wheels are on on the deck, steering arm's done. Now to see if it actually moves. I look forward to the day when I actually sort that out. Reverse. And does it move? Oh, that's a good sign. Well, one extra swap complete. All I've got to do now is put the bumper on. And that's it done. So in total it took me about just over a day and a half on my own. 